Hi there, welcome back to Leading Our Own Way for part two of Patrick Manifold's interview here on Leading Our Own Way with myself, Andrew White. If you missed part one, please go back to yesterday's episode of where we discussed some amazing things of his journey and how it started off. But today, we're starting off the conversation with the important relationship with the word can't. I start off by how I start with my teaching and stay, say, please put the word yet on the end of a sentence that we can't word can't, can't use the word can't, right? I can't do this yet. About rewiring the brain. However, Patrick has a different um, mindset around it and it's absolutely fascinating and how he embeds it with his own children. We start off with that one. And we're also going to discuss some challenging social norms um, and then how we, we he discusses the importance of independent thinking uh, and having ha how important it is now to have some difficult conversations. Uh, and, and, you know, when, when we give advice, that we make sure that it comes from a place of love. Anyway, here's part two of Patrick Manifold. Enjoy. In my house, that word that you just used, can't, that is as bad as the other C word. So... <laughs> <laughs> and no word of a lie, that is a swear word in my house to the point where Sophia is now unable to say it, right? Wow. So she, she can't, like when she goes to say, I can't do it, now she says, I'm currently unable. <laughs> and it's hilarious when she says it and my wife just cracks up laughing when we're in public. And she said, I'm currently unable to tie my shoelaces, but one day I'm going to learn how to do it. Because it, every time she said she would say can't, like by accident, she mm. would just look at me like this, like, Oh shit! I just said something really wrong. So yeah. can't is a swear word in my house. You, you're allowed to not be able to do something right now, but you can't program yourself to say that I am absolutely unable to do this forever. It's I'm currently unable, and it's uh, yeah. So, so if I the do girl said, all the time. <laughs> so if the girl said my sentence, I can't do it yet. It, it did still be wrong the, the, for saying it. C is a story, but the, the thing is, like, she'll hear me singing it, like, in songs, like, the word is in, like, a, it, like I use it all the time. She said, you, yeah. you used it. I said, okay, now we're getting some nuances, and <laughs> don't worry about it. You're not allowed to say it, bottom line. That but was going to come it, your way. Yeah. She was <laughs> exactly. going to say that. She was going to pick you up on that at some point. <laughs> I know, I know, and I'm okay with it. We have, a, we have a thing in our family, or with me and Sophia, where I don't like that I say, um, sometimes. Like, I used to do it a lot more than I do now because I've got myself out of it. Because mm -hmm. I would watch videos back of me and say, hi, um, my um, uh, name is um, uh, Patrick. And I yeah. hate that. I hate it. So now she, we have a thing when we're not allowed to say um, because we've had the conversation about all it is, is our brains wanting to fill the silence while we think. And it's yeah. just like an automatic thing. And every time we do it, I'll, if, if she catches me do it, she'll say, daddy. And then I'll just go like this and she'll tap me on the hand and say, bad daddy. And if she does it, I'll say, bad Fifi. And that's like little things like that that we're playing. She's five years old. Yeah. Right? I didn't get any of this stuff until I was like in my 20s. Mm. And she's getting it from birth. So those mm. kids are going to be uh, pretty special, I think. Yeah. They're probably going to write more books than you ever did. <laughs> no doubt. Probably use an AI. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different story, isn't it? Um, you, <laughs> see, I see. I'd still do it. I'm I'm. I'm trying to train myself out. I, I must admit when I watch back on my nurturing leadership channel, um, the videos that I create for, for leaders and so on, I was doing a lot of erming. I'm in the car listening to myself because I want to, you know, hear it. And I, oh, I just said, um, I've got to stop doing the erm. Um. I'm, right. I'm slowly doing it. I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm when new. I, when I first started, I had a, like a band on my wrist and every time I did it, I'd ping myself. And eventually oh. you just kind of train your, your mind to just be like, okay, let's pick a different word or what me and Sophia do is just, you just silence. Like, it's okay to think it's okay to do that. Like, and a perfect example, this is Elon Musk. And sometimes he, he'll have like a 13 second pondering. And I, mm -hmm. I respect that more than, um, cause um makes you sound silly. Like you don't know what you're talking about. Um, like, like you're trying to pluck something out of nowhere. Whereas thinking you're like, actually, this is what I think. It's okay to take five seconds. It's okay to take a couple of seconds. It's better that than to just fill it with all these little filler words, right? Agree. Uh, I'm totally on board with you, but now I'm paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might just drink my coffee whilst I think. <laughs> um, so with, with, with that in mind, do you think with, with the, the parenting approach that you've got, which I completely agree, I call it the um, – I call it the, the – I suppose the old school mixed with the modern feels. That's how I like to look at it. 
if that makes any sense. Right. Because I feel like we've gone probably too far on this side where, you know, we're worried about what people think. We 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 stop talking so we don't offend anybody these days. You know, right. in school I see children asking the most simplest of questions. And I, I always put it back onto them and go, Well, what do you think? What do you think you should do now? And the more often than not, they'll actually they know the tell answer. me. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And you know, there's a few that might need an extra counseling. You know, I'm there to do that. Absolutely. But I suppose to you, do you think you have this approach because you see the same as maybe what I do in society? We, we, we're going in a direction where, where maybe, I don't know, we're too soft. You know, we stimulate, we have to stimulate everything these days. You know, for right. me, boredom develops the creative mind. Um, you know, I, I, I tell my son, no, you, you don't need the TV. You don't need an iPad. You know, we limit all of that stuff to the level where he's constantly asking for it. Well, that's coming from peer pressure at school. Because right. um, they're, they're, the children at school are constantly, obviously, on it, but he's not. Right. Um, I, he lives in Australia. I want him to be outside. I want him to right. be with Enjoy nature it. and let's go play ball. Yes, I want to be a part of it, but there's times I would love him to go and shoot on his own without me. So he Because I was out there for hours without anybody. I want him right. to just drive it because he wants to do it. Of course, I'll go and shoot with him. I'm not saying that. But do you... Do you have that approach because, I don't know, is, or is it just within and that's just how you think it should be? Well, I believe, and Sophia is now believing too, mm -hmm. that we are leaders. And, and we, this is another, goes back to another thing. In, I coach her in basketball. And one day we were, we, I've always picked teams and whatever. And I say, who, you know, who's going to be the captain of the team? And she said, and afterwards, on the way home in the car, she's in the back of the Jeep. She says, Daddy, how come you didn't pick me for the, to be the leader of the team? And I said, because you didn't act like a leader. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, who here is a leader? And you didn't say anything. So you, you told me that you weren't a leader. And she said, so what do I have to do? I said, well, if, it's, if you want to be a leader and you want to act like one, whenever you hear me say, who here is a leader, I want you to stick your hand up. I want you to take a step forward and say, I'm a leader. So everyone in the whole gym can hear it. That's what a leader does. Mm. Uh, and of course, the next, very next session, it was hilarious. She literally did exactly that. Just stepped forward, yelled, I'm a leader. And I was like, <laughs> okay, young lady, come here. Because in basketball, she's, she's not my daughter. She is uh, another player. So I'm trying not to have any favoritism or anything like that. Yeah. Obviously, I'm a little bit tougher on her than I am everyone else anyway, just naturally. But yes, I would always rather be someone that is followed than someone that follows other people. I don't like a lot of that stuff that you mentioned about how like, like molly coddling and like, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Mm. In my opinion, the truth is the truth. And people closest to me don't necessarily love this about me, my wife included. Sometimes mm. I'll say stuff and she'll be like, why are you so mean? Like why? And I said, is, is the thing that I said the truth, right? And there's people, by, if I'm just meeting someone in the street, of course I'm not just going to tell the truth. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to say white lies. I'm going to do what I can to make that person feel good. Mm -hmm. But when I have built trust with somebody, why would, I, why would I lie to them? I believe that that is like a sign of disrespect to lie to somebody. So for me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty honest about kind of... It's Alexa, my other assistant. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, just, I just believe that you have to be in charge of your own fate. And mm -hmm. like, like what you said, if we don't do it, we're gonna, they're going to get taught by people and things and ideas and ideologies that I just flat out don't agree with and, mm. and kind of basically the same as you. And I don't want that. So I want her to be her own leader. And if she and all of my children, she's just the head of the younger family because she's the oldest, obviously. But I want them to be in charge of their own life and not care about, like, I don't want them to care about fashion. Like my daughter, I, my, I get mad at my wife for letting my daughters play with makeup. Because I, I'm a firm believer, and I, there's a chance this might offend someone. I don't like the fact that women feel like when they wake up, they have to get up like an hour earlier than men to put literally a mask on their face mm. to be accepted in society. Mm. To me, that is so toxic, so toxic. And the idea that a woman, especially now, like I say, I'm a father of three daughters, I'm starting to think about the world a lot differently than I used to. I don't want them to think that they're appearance matters at all maybe when they're 30 years old and they want to you know start going out and doing things maybe or you know 21 or whatever 
But as a child, for her, for them to think that in order for them to feel and look pretty, that they have to wear makeup, I think that's disgusting. So I'm actually trying to like go the other way and like I know not everyone's going to agree with me on that and oh they're just kids having fun, but I believe that it it's a it's a slippery slope, right? And all of a sudden now you're caring about a lot more about what you're wearing and how you look on the outside when that's not what's important. Who you are as a person, how you treat other people, what you're pr- producing in the world, who you're taking care of, the impact that you're having, the what you're learning, those are important things. What your face looks like is so trivial. It's it's pathetic. And I don't I don't want them to to have that belief that that matters. Yes, we can play dress up and they can have Disney stuff all that stuff like that, of course. But as far as like them thinking that they have to wear makeup to look pretty, I'm just I'm not on board. Yeah, I, 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 I can't, I can't fault you. Well, there's nothing. I completely agree with you. You know, I, I do worry for the future. I worry about where. I, I find that when I have discussions at schools about how I feel, and you, you know, I can, I can feel the the pull on it. Um, you know, it's, you write that word mean. I, I stand back and go, I'm not mean. I'm just wanting the best for these people. Right for the future. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to get into discussions. I don't. I, it, this is not the forum for some of the th- topics I probably would bring up with, you know, with modern medicine and schools, and we categorize everything these days. And I do really, really, really worry because again, I don't want to offend anybody. I, I, I get so scared about offending somebody with what I say. But I want, I want, I want, I don't want to. I, I, I suppose I still want to. Oh. So that that's the problem. Like that makes you not be able to tell your truth. I know, fear that exactly. someone's going to take it the wrong way. Like I was, I was in the sauna this morning and I was contemplating something and I know I am a little bit tough sometimes and I, I'm, I haven't been that tough like in my content online and mm. I'm thinking I should just be more myself because yeah. if I went, if you went to a doctor say and you had a disease, let's just say a random disease mm. and that disease, if you nipped it in the bud or if you did something, you took some medication, you went for surgery, etc., that you can get over that disease, right? But your doctor, he doesn't really want to hurt your feelings. So he just says, you'll be okay. Don't worry yeah. about it. You'll be yeah. okay. Or do you yeah. want him to say, you've got disease. Let's fix it. It'll make you better. That's, yeah. the, that's the, literally like a great metaphor for, for where we're at right now. Someone's 150 pounds overweight and, and we, we're not allowed to do anything that might feel, make them feel ashamed or body shaming or anything like that. If you're 150 pounds overweight and your kid is 75 pounds overweight, age nine, that's a problem. And if we can't just speak the truth and say that that is unhealthy and that that is dangerous, that that person's going to die younger than they, like, they should, if you can't tell the truth, we're in a very dangerous place. So, yeah, I'm just I'm a pretty common sense guy. I struggle when things don't make sense. I struggle when people are just, just lie, like politicians come on TV and say one thing one day and another thing another. Like, I struggle with that. And I'm, I'm never going to, like, I'll appease people in, in person because like, I'm a kind individual and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So I would never say stuff like that. But when I'm in my content, if I'm talking to you about trying to, you're trying to have a great life, don't come in here and tell me that all you do is eat garbage all day and then complain to me okay. where you're, because you're overweight. Because yeah. it's, it's, at this point, ideas are like, it's democratized. All the information you need to be great is out there. And if you're not taking it, that's on you. Like That's just a laziness thing. That's mm. not a, I don't know how to do it thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. And that's why you know, with some of the books behind me, I've you know, started reading the last couple of years, I've actually started studying a bit more around the human biology, you know, neuroscience, neuroplasticity and stuff like that with the brain. And I think we do have to go to the cellular level to understand um, what causes these things that are so prevalent in society now, you know, cardiovascular disease, heart disease. I mean, a cardiovascular disease is what the number one killer in, in America, if not right. probably the world now. Right. And, but why is it ha- happening? This wasn't around a couple of a hundred years ago. You know, right. uh, cancer is more prevalent now. I, you know, we have to go to the cellular level to understand. You've just touched on it, the food that we're eating. I know we want to embrace and not hurt anyone's feelings in terms of them being uh, overweight, maybe. But let's go to the core issue here. Right. We've got to stop treating the symptoms and start going to the core and prevention. This and is, I think especially if you're if what you're saying comes from a place of love, like if what yeah. if if you're gonna tear someone down to try and make yourself feel better, then yeah. that's 
that's just a horrible toxic trait yeah. that you should figure out but if you're saying if you have find, have someone you love or care about or whatever and you're like i'm just going to tell you the truth because i'm genuinely scared for you and I, I i know you can do better i know you're capable of doing better so i want to tell you and show you that path i think that's the best way to do i think uh, not everyone's going to like it but i think that if it comes from a place of love and from from me it always does then yeah i'm just going to be honest and live with the consequences what would your advice be then um if the people you knew um were not suffering but they were happy but you knew they weren't healthy let's say in that scenario they were happy in life but they were unhealthy and you were worried for them personally what what would you i'll what have would you I'll do there? give you an exact example i had a conversation with and i won't say the names because obviously these people mm. are pretty close to my circle or whatever but there's someone in my life who i love dearly and there's, there's someone else in her, that person's parent who i love dearly too that person smokes a lot of cigarettes and that person is mature you know over 60 or whatever and i had a conversation with the person closest to me and said again like a sound she said why do you have to say such mean things i said do you know that they're gonna die in the next kind of five to seven years when they should live for another 20 and that made that person upset but I don't want the guilt of like, I'm going to have to deal with the consequences of when that happens too soon. And my, you know, the people that are that person's grandchildren, they're going to have to deal with the consequences of not having that person around. So sometimes like it's awkward. We can't be afraid to have awkward conversations is what I'm saying. Yeah. You yeah. have to, if something, especially when it's like, when it's preventable, you need to have that awkward conversation. You need to have that with your wife and your husband or whatever the case may be. And if it's something that's bothering you or you've changed or they've changed or something, you need to be able to say, you know what, like, this is, I'm going to have to pull this bandaid off because if I don't, it's going to become something that's, that's so huge. And there's a quote, I was giving a leadership speech to a group of firefighters the other day and I had this great quote, which I can't remember right now, but it was something along the lines of we, when we put off having an awkward conversation for momentary happiness, it creates long-term dysfunction or something mm -hmm. like that, paraphrasing it. And that's the truth. Like we're trading oh, I don't want to be uncomfortable right now for in six months, six years, whatever the case may be, being hit by a ton of, this ton of bricks, right? I would rather just pick that one brick up and it break one window and it'd be awkward and pay a hundred bucks than I would my entire house fall down, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's logical, Very. but it's, it's in the moment, it's hard because ugh, most people just don't want to rock the boat. Mm. Most people would rather be silently miserable than actually solve a problem. And I just like solving problems. I, I couldn't agree more. Simon Sinek brings that up about difficult conversations. You know, the leadership guru that's been floating yeah. around YouTube for the last 10 years. And uh, since I've heard him talk about the, the younger generations coming through to the workforce, they would actually rather quit. He, again, I'm paraphrasing, but he, he brings up about people would rather quit than go and have a difficult conversation conversation with their boss right. and since he said that that's all i've ever noticed they would actually rather just crawl within themselves and move past it and sacrifice a, you know spend their own emotional currency and you know enter stress depression anxiety whatever it may be and um then go and have a difficult conversation with the boss and I think that comes down to a lot of like a lot of people have low self-esteem and low self-worth and they feel like they don't even deserve to bring that up because it might piss someone else off or upset somebody else. Whereas I think that we should all, and this is what obviously all the stuff I talk about, people should all have a very high standard of themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they, if that's not being met by other people, they must confront them. Otherwise they're, they're just a victim. And who wants to live and be a victim their entire life? But, but most people are because they're just a, they're a victim to circumstance. They don't happen to the world. The world just happens to them and they just kind of like kind of fold and go around. They're kind of like water. They go around any kind of rocks that get in their way. And I just don't think that that's the form of happiness. So much of what I write, and I've noticed in recent years, so much of what I write finds its way back to happiness. Yeah, And all I care about is, is the people around me and the people who follow me and the people who are exposed to my content. All I want is for them to be happy. And sometimes you have to have tough conversations in order to be happy. If you're like most people that are overweight, the simple thing they do is they don't look in the mirror. 
right? They just avoid the problem. It's not that bad. You know, as long as I don't see it, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Mm. And I'm just like, yo, take all your clothes off and look in the mirror. Stare at it for five minutes. If you're going to cry, go ahead and cry. What, hopefully it creates that kind of anger and frustration and disappointment in yourself that you're capable of better. And that will inspire you to do better. But if you avoid it forever, it's just going to keep getting worse until one day something really bad happens. And I just don't want that. Where do you think this all began, where it started to, to change in society? Or do you think it's always been like this? What, what, what do you think the core issues of where happiness is so far? I feel like it's so far away from most people now. I know we've been through a lot recently. I feel like I know the core issues. And my two top, one or two of my top things I always try and consider when I talk to people would be, you've touched on it a couple of times today, but food and sleep, you know, to help the serotonin release um, on a daily basis and really set ourselves up in the morning uh, to, you know, those small, simple steps. You've mentioned it in your book about making small changes per day. And I talk about making, you know, one, one percent change opposed to making, you know, New Year's resolution is a big one. You, you are, I, I, I use that quite a lot. And then I, I came across it in your book. I was like, right down my alley. But we talk about New Year's resolution and by week three of January, it's gone. It's puff in the air. Right. Uh, but if we just do small little habit changes per day, that habit becomes normalized. And then within a certain period of time, obviously, time of frames, the, the time of frame is completely different for the individual. Right. But it's become, the behaviors become normalized and the, your, your trajectory of your life begins to change. What, what, what do you think on that? When it comes to that, like I'm, I'm huge on goal setting. Actually, that book you have behind you was called New Year, Better You. It mm. used to be called New Year, New You. And we talk about how society changes. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.